when hope is gone. Undo this lock and send me forth on a moonlit walk. Release restraint level zero. Hey guys, this is the Void of the Ravenclaw. Welcome back to another fanfiction story. Let's get this information out of the way before we continue on with the story. On the last part, we're in a decent-sized flashback, and we're going to be we're going to go through his time in his past on his how he became a demon lord in the first place. So it's going to be a large flashback. Not sure how large it is or how many, uh, how, sorry, I'm not sure how many parts I'm going to make from his flashback. But there, I know there are at least going to be uh, more than two. So anyways, let's get into the story. As we continue where we last left off, in the outskirts of the city, after the young dragon humanoid boy ate his food and paid, and paid for it, he followed the high elf named Vivian, his new magic teacher, teacher. When they finally approached the city, the guards allowed them entry without no trouble. It seems like the guards knew who Vivian was, and by the manner, she's highly respected. The moment Frost entered the city, he saw all kinds of different types of magical creatures, like fairies, pixies, and uh, alongside with a f quite a few humanoid dragons, alongside with wizards, sorcerers, and a few mages. Frost even saw a battle mage stepping out of the inn. As Vivian informed the two that the match that that this kingdom holds a variety of different type of magical creatures or people that wields a wield magic. As she is explaining this while they're walking through the city, as she informed Frost that that uh, that there is a good portion of the population that uh, that are elves. Vivian informed Frost and his maid that she lives in the elf district that's separated by different districts like the elf district and the dragon district and so on. Elf district itself is more like a forest that has buildings in on the you know, right next to them. It's it's the, uh, the district is combined with forests and living quarters and shops and all that, all that nature. Once Frost entered the elf district, he saw all kinds of diff all kinds of elves, mostly high elves. He he um Frost even saw a few dark elves. And 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 a few other ones that he's never seen before. Ross has only seen a few elves through that one town he visited, or on the road. He's not really familiar with their species, or any species. For not being an elf, they did get a couple looks. When they would come, where, uh, when they would cross, well, walk by. Typical, for they normally don't see a dragon, um, sorry, a humanoid dragon. In the elf district, they normally don't venture into the elf, elf side of the city. And the mere fact that he's a more of a rare when it comes to the humanoid dragon species in, in a hole. And Frost's bright blue horns makes him more unique out of the lot. And that's not the only thing that catches the the elf's eyes. They noticed the uh, demonkin, the darkling, 
that dress as a maid. They were a very strange pair up. They're mostly out of curiosity than anything else. Don't mind my kin, they're just curious. You're a very unique species of humanoid dragon, alongside your little darkling maid. We should get, oh, sorry, we should be getting close to my house. As they go down one dirt road, being away from all the stores and houses, they finally got to a large field where they see a huge manor. As soon as Vivian got back to the house, she showed the, the two of them around the house and showed them to their rooms where they, where they will be stunning, st uh, staying under her tutelage, mostly refer to Frost. She immediately began te uh, tutelage, Frost, and the basics first, how to channel magic and how to do it properly. She could tell, she could tell he, he has it down naturally, but she wants him to go over the basic anyways. When Vivian was satisfied that the young dragon kid got, got that down, she started to teach him how to suppress his magical aura. It's quite dangerous for him to have his aura out just like, uh, out like that. He could easily kill a non-magical creature. A normal human alone would die from the, from the exposure, from his pure magical power. So she made it perfectly clear that that's important to keep track of and not to let it leak out. Vivian was quite surprised that the kids seemed to got it, um, got it, sorry, managed to get it down in three days. It only took you three days to get that down. Most impressive. Before I teach you anything else, I want to make sure you master your own Species of magic abilities, judging by your scales, your horns, you most likely have an affinity for water and ice. As Vivian teaches Frost a beginner water spell and a beginner ice spell. As she hand over a beginner spell book over to her apprentice, I want you to practice the basics of the water and ice spells and somehow infuse it with your natural abilities you get from what species you come from. Because your species magical power you have access to us, access of doesn't cost it doesn't well oh, sorry doesn't well uh, I forget how I'm gonna say that. Doesn't draw from your magic. It's magic in nature, but it doesn't cost any mana to to cast. It's your job to figure out a way to somehow merge the two. I forbid you to practice any other spell that's not in the element. Until you have mastered the beginning, water spell and ice spell. You have my then you have my sorry, then you have my permission to practice anything else in the beginner book. In the beginner spell book. All right. I have to head to my class. I might be retired from the field, but I do enjoy teaching. I should be back at the house later, later today, in the afternoon, at least late afternoon. Before I leave, I'll demonstrate the two spells that you'll be practicing while I'm away. As she spends a few minutes casting the spells that Izuku needs to learn how to cast, well, Basically easy you, but anyways, um, Frost. Before I leave, once, or before I get back. I'm sorry, guys. Before I leave, I want you to master these two beginner spells. I want you to find out a way to combine your species magic with one of the beginning spells in the book. When you 
when you accomplish that, and then we can move on to your next lesson. But until then, practice. Vivian walks away and she head out to out of the house to uh, to the magical academy. The biggest, well, the main ma magical academy that produces well renowned, well well known and powerful mages, or depends on what you are, mage, witch, wizard. It it really depends. Three weeks has passed since he started his apprenticeship with Vivian. As you see Frost at some sort of lake outside of the city limits, well, near the border of the Magical Kingdom. Short pause, I will be naming it. I, that, oh, sorry, that will be revealed as I continue through the story. So let's get right back into it. The lake has a large amount of body of water, so he could play with, play with, sorry, play with when he's training with his abilities to, to could sorry, to control the water. He doesn't have to create it from the Akushin in the air. Luckily for Frost, there is a large amount of water that, oh sorry, that he has access to. Ross begins to walk onto the lake or into the lake. As he begins to walk on the water, he's keeping a well, he's keeping a minor float spell. So he's able to walk on the water. He was forced to use a minor spell like that to walk on the water. He hasn't got good enough in his affinity where he could do it without using that spell. But He's going to have to strive for it. As Frost is walking on top of the water, he's keeping a float because of, well, based on what I said, with the spell and everything. He's using a... It's not the only spell he has act, well, active right now, outside of that minor one. He has another spell active that increases his gravity. He could deactivate and activate when he will cast it again basically it deactivates when the spell runs out it only stays on until he has until his mana de uh, depletes but he has a huge amount of it so that's not going to happen anytime soon once frost got in the middle of the lake he proceeded to create several humanoid shaped water constructs as frost watches these constructs begin running around on top of the water surrounding frost as the lake water begins to rise up oh sorry the lake water begins to rise up and surround all around frost's hand as he activate his spell forming forming into water at well, sorry, bullet like shapes basically water bullets basically i'm trying to say as the water bullets shoot off from his fingertips like I said, basically is a water bullet. As he begins to shoot at the water constructs, as he's training his accuracy, while while sorry, while his targets are moving. Like every day, Vex is not too far away from her, from her master. No matter what, where he goes, she goes. If Frost is is sorry. If Frost is there, then um, Vex is not too far away. If he's not, if she's not close to him, she's hiding. In, she's hiding in, in his shadow. As she watches her master train, this has become a daily routine. As you see an underwater cave, that's in the lake. As you see a large sea serpent, that used the cave system. To get to the get well get to the lake by the sea normally you would never see a sea serpent in a lake but because of the cave system connecting the lake to the sea the serpent made his way into the lake and made it its nest or home he's able to the creature or the monster is able to get plenty to eat because he's the bigger predator in in the whole lake he made himself quite, quite um, comfy at, at home. 
The pure magical pressure that's been released by Frost managed to wake up the sleeping uh, serpent. As the serpent opened his glowing yellow eyes, as it begins to ascend, once it swam out of the cave, as, as it immediately started to swim upwards toward the surface, where Frost is in the middle of doing his own, in the middle of his training, while it's ascending outwards. Meanwhile, Frost was man. Well, I'm sorry. Try this again. Meanwhile, Frost was managing to get his accuracy down as he begins to hit several of the water constructs with his water bullets. He was about to finish the last one off until his base instinct screamed at him to to jump out of the way. He started to jump back or jump backwards as he saw bubbles coming underneath him. As he saw something shoot out of the water. The moment he jumped backwards, his head stick out of the water as it as it's a humongous greenish bluish Serpent that is direct, uh, directly staring at Frost with his pure hunger in his eyes like he's a snack. The serpent's more greenish. Let's just, let's just throw some blue in there. That's for make it more, more like it. Sorry. Makes it more stick out. A little bit rusty. So you're going to get me a little... Uh, it's going to take me some time to get to get into the flow of things, so I do apologize. As the serpent give out a screech, when the serpent lunge at Frost, it got slashed across its face by a black scythe as Vex grabbed onto her master and jumped backwards. Master, you're not hurt, are you? Harm, Vex. What is that creature? It's a sea serpent. I don't know what it's doing here or how it even got here in the first place. But those things are dangerous. They're man-eaters. They normally just attack fishing uh, fishing boats. And in, in the sea. See, you learn a spell to walk on water as well. Yes, I know a spell. I normally don't use. Because I never had to. But this is the perfect occasion to use it. I learned it just in case I came into this sort of situation. It's best, it's best to be prepared. Allow me to handle this, Master. No reason, no reason to dirty your hands. For um, my, from a me, from a mere garden snake. Very well, Vex. I'll stay out of it. Once I see you're in trouble. I'll interrupt, but uh, uh, but until then, have fun. Vex rests her scythe on the top of her right shoulder as she walks towards the serpent while the monster is distracted by the pain across his face, still screeching. Slow walk, turn into a sprint, then turn into full-on running as she's running on top of the water with her scythe In her right hand, the serpent noticed her approaching as it let out a high condensed water blast out of his mouth as Vex began dodging and weaving around the high condensed water shots as she leap in the middle of the air as she slice right through the serpent's skin on its chest as she skid across the water. Side jumped until she was behind the serpent. She moved, she moved so fast that it seemed like there was after images of herself. As she rests her sight on the right shoulder. She turned her back towards the monster. You made the biggest mistake in your pathetic existence going after my master. Now I'm going to have fun playing with you. Then ultimately... I'm going to eat you. I've never had serpent before, so it's going to be a first for both of us. 
as she turned as she turned to dodge the serpent mouth as she is as the serpent is now trying to eat uh eat vexed and she's eppersly dodging out of the way. Vex, notice, electricity started to emanate off the serpent's body as it shut out a electric bolt out of his mouth. Vex rated herself to get hit by the electric, only to see a large amount of body of water freeze as she mainly sidestep to the side and dodged the electric bolt as she gave a smile to her master for the assistance as she continued her battle against with the sea serpent. Suddenly the sea serpent sank into the water. The serpent popped his head up out and shot water infused with his with his electric bolt as she dodged several of these water bullets or water shots with infused with electricity. Unfortunately Several of them manage to hit her in the chest in, in, in the chest as she goes flying in flying across the water, skidding across it. As Vex does a somersault on top of the water as she land on her feet, skidding in a backward motion. As she has her sights oh sorry, as she has her sight swinging from the lunge snake coming at her. Slashing it across the face again as the serpent screamed out in pain. Vex feels a hand on her shoulder as she turns to see her master next to her. Well, not really on her shoulder because she's taller than him because he's still a kid still. But you know the gif. He just tugged on her um her maid uniform to get uh, to get her attention. This looks like fun. Why don't you take a breather? I'll finish it up. You sure, Master? I can kill this thing. I'm just playing with it. I'm fully aware of your capabilities, but it's perfect. But this is the perfect opportunity to test what I've learned so far. Good, Master. I'll just keep watch as X jump backwards onto the land, as she, as she made her well, as her black scythe disappear into nothingness from her hand. As she used the magic she know to fix her uniform from being from the being ripped and teared because of the high dense water shots that managed to land on her. While they were talking, the sea serpent reemerged into the water. As Frost saw bubbles in a certain area of the lake, he immediately went into action as water begins to form around his hand. Towards his finger, immediately the water turned into ice picks as he as he shoots them off towards the emerging sea monster. As several of the ice picks landed it under the under belly of the serpent, only area that hasn't have doesn't have very very strong scales. The sea serpent scales look weak at, looks weak, but in reality, they're quite power, uh, they're quite tough. Not as tough as dragon scales, but they're decent. When his ice picks landed into the serpent's flesh, the serpent screeched out in pain, will, uh, well, wildly swinging his head around as he stares down on a small boy with pure hatred in his eyes. As Frost stared down the serpent with no fear in him, he's still a dragon and he will not show any fear or hesitation in, in his ex uh, expression or body language. He has more pride in that. For a brief second, the serpent looked upwards as he sees a, uh, as the sea serpent sees a water and ice dragon hovering over him. Serpent looked down at the small boy that seemed to have a smirk on his face. With one motion, well, motion from his hand, as the, 
as the ice and water dragon rushed down, rushed towards the sea serpent, as the two construct circled around the serpent, combining right in front of the serpent, as as um, Frost created a water and ice vortex surrounding the serpent, as immediately ice spikes shoot out in all directions. As the ice spikes penetrate the scales and pierce the flesh of the sea serpent, making the serpent wore out in pain. When the cyclone, or sorry, when the ice and water cyclone finally dis disappeared, as you see a heavily injured sea serpent, as the serpent is charging up a, a lightning bolt, a more powerful version of his electric bolt, well, that looks dangerous. Let's see. As he placed a finger under his chin in a thinking pose, I could probably you I could probably freeze it, but that would deny Vex her meal that she so in into the idea of having. So let's not do that. Frost decided to not use any of his ice abilities. He could probably kill it with one water spell. That he's been working on. So this is the perfect opportunity. To combine his magic with his natural abilities. To breathe fire. As a dragon. He doesn't want to use. His frost fire. That's. he he's Like he said. He doesn't want to freeze it. Now, uh, now the main question is for him is. How he's going to use basic dragon fire. To make it into a vantage and ultimately a win. Frost formed a fireball into his palm of his hand as he shot out, shot it, well, shot it out forward towards the serpent as it immediately, sorry, I'm saying, guys, shot it forward into the serpent's now opening mouth when he's about to char, while he's charging up the light, well, the lightning bolt from his mouth. Making the lightning bolt go off prematurely. Well, just going off in his mouth. Serpent is swinging his head around wildly. From the fireball going into his mouth and along with his own attack. Fireball hit. It accidentally shocked itself. It might be resistant to any electricity or lightning spell from, from the outside. But, uh, but from within, it's quite vulnerable. Frost uses opportunity to create a humongous water shot. Basically shot out, a, shot out a water blade as it sliced through the serpent body, separated its head from its body as Frost grabbed onto the serpent's body and dragged it up to, the, uh, to, uh, to land. It is a huge serpent. It might be a huge serpent, but he's a dragon. He might be a humanoid dragon, but a normal dragon and a humanoid dragon have the same strength. He's technically, he's, he's a dragon that's in human form, basically. And, and what I'm trying to get the point is, they're just a different type of uh, species of dragon. That happens to stay in human form instead of having a dragon form. Lifting the body of the dead serpent was a quite an easy task for him. Now Frost is just pondering himself how he's going to get this thing back home. It's quite large. This kid can immediately tell what her master's thinking. I have no idea, master. I don't have any dimensional inventory magic. Never learn it, nor do I have the affinity for it. It's like pocket dimension magic, basically what it is. Yeah, I could be some assistance, my beloved student. You two have done a very good job. And an excellent performance. When, uh, when it came to your magic frost. Most impressive, indeed. You're not even old enough to attend the academy, and you're already better than any of the first years. As she walks over to the dead corpse of the sea serpent... As, there, as there's a bright flash of light as the body completely disappeared 
into her own little pocket dimension. It's in, it's in my pocket dimension. I'll take it out so the cooks can prepare it. It looks like we're going to it looks like we're going to be eating serpent tonight. They don't eat me, but this is a special occasion. Down your down, sorry. You took down your first monster. Of that we might get a good price on the serpent scales. We're going to get a large amount of money for for that. And some good meat. It's a win. It's a win on both counts. I'll have the estimate amount of how much you'll get from this, from from the scales, and I'll give you the earnings once I find a buyer. Let's head back to the house before you run in, run into any other monsters. Do you have any idea how a sea serpent got to the lake? Oh, got to this lake? Let me check. Sea serpents don't have legs. Only logical conclusion I can come up with. It must have used the cave systems that's connected to the lake, to the sea. The cave systems hasn't hasn't been fully explored yet, but we know it leads to the sea. I never expected a sea serpent to manage to get in there. I'll have a couple of Avengers. Well, not Avengers, but. <laughs> Couple of adventurers to uh, to explore the cave this cave system, so we can prevent such a thing in the future. I'll bring it up to the next meeting. I believe I could get uh, a quest for the adventurers guild to take care of it. You two, you two have have had enough fun for today. Let's get going. As four years has passed. Since his arrival at the magical kingdom known as Lexia, Frost has thrived under Vivian's tutelage. As you see, a nine year old Frost, by at least looks, at least, he's still, qu he's still quite young when it comes to humanoid dragons. Even when he turns 18, he'll still be considered a kid still. Frost and Frost is been traveling with Vivian more recently alongside with Vex of course she would never leave her master's side as they've been exploring different type of old ruins around the around their kingdom they were simply requested from the higher ups from Lexia Simply wanted Vivian to check it out. It's a brand new ruin of one of the ancient demon lords that uh, that used to rule this land centuries ago. When they entered the ruin, Vivian accidentally set off some sort of trap as Vivian, Vex, and Frost got separated in different directions by the trap doors. False walls, false um, floor, you know... Dungeon type of shit. When the fake floor opened up, as Frost found himself sliding downwards, when he finally got to the end of the little s slide ride, he found himself in a dark hallway as he saw some uh, some unlit torches. As he snapped his fingers, as all the torches lit up. As he noticed several carvings on the walls of the hallway, when he finally got into the when he finally got to the end of the hallway, he entered a huge chamber. Immediately, he made all the torches all lit at the same time in the chamber. As he saw a very precise and detailed m memorial painting over over the wall or several walls, displaying several stories in the art form, basically. From the demon lord's past from rising into his fall. Frost memorized the story being told on the walls as his eyes widen. This is the first time he heard of a demon lord. He might have been born with a lot of information, mostly magic, 
but uh, but he's ignorant, ignorant of the status quo of things. When it comes to demon lords in the rest of the world, that's why he wanted to explore the world firsthand to get the information. He's just curious, most of most of all. There's 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 a lot of information he doesn't know, and that he does not like that. He doesn't like the unknown. And learning as much as possible so he can find the best situation to survive this world. As he saw a very old pedestal on, sorry, a very old pedestal in the distance in the room. On top of that pedestal was a black book that has a symbol of, of the past demon lord, family symbol basically. As he, as he see the, the pure black book, as he slowly approached the pedestal and picked up book, picked up the book. As he begins to read through the, read through it, he was quite surprised. It's going in great detail explanation on the process of becoming a demon lord. It requires a lot of sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice and a lot of people. He would have to kill, he would have to kill a large amount of anyone. It doesn't really specify on the species. There just has to be a lot of casualties. To insane numbers. And that was only one of the steps. In order to begin the first step. He's going to have to find something called. The Demon Lord Heart. Of course. The journal doesn't explain what that is. Or where to get it. Or even what to do with it. Once you, once you acquired it. What little de uh, details was missing from the journal. As he, as he continues to read throughout the whole journal, making sure he doesn't miss anything. He, he is extremely interested in this demon lord process. Frost doesn't know if he wants to be a demon lord, but he, he finds the whole process of becoming a demon lord uh, quite interesting. Frost doesn't know how he feel about sacrificing so many lives. Killing someone in self-defense in a fight is one thing, but to sacrifice so many lives on a grand scale like this is something he would never imagine doing, currently. Doesn't say he wouldn't, just currently he has no desire. Whatever it, what, oh, sorry, whatever is this demon lord heart is probably not going to be easy to find. As Frost is thinking he's going to have to do some research in the Grand Library, in Library, oh, oh, sorry, back at the Capitol. There's even a good possibility that the library won't have any information on it. Frost decided to keep this tad bit of information away from his teacher. As he, as he put the book away in his bag, as he begins to walk around the chamber, examining everything closely, Frost heard a loud sound as one of the walls crumbles as Vex comes stepping out. There you are, Master. Sorry it took me so long to get here. As Frost sees behind her is rows of several monsters behind her dead. I had some company to, to, uh, to entertain while I was searching for you. Bunch of goblins. Like that. Goblin little bastards. I hate it when they go feral. You seem, you seem to be in good mood, Master. Yes, I am. I'm very in a good mood right now. I found something interesting. Please do tell, Master. Good time. I'll explain everything once we move on from Lexia. When my tutorship with Vivian ends, I'll explain. I'm going to do some research on it. So let's just say it has something to do with a... With, with demon lords. Now, let's find my teacher. She should be around here somewhere. Right behind you, Master. Frost and Vex went the back where... Sorry, went back the way Vex came from. As they're trying to backtrack to a... To a well, a connecting hallway. To get to the rest of the other side of the ruins. 
as they finally found Vivian as she searching around, around a large chamber. Much larger, the much larger chamber than a, uh, than Frost found, or found himself in. As he as he saw his teacher examining all the carvings all over the wall. There you are, Frost. I hope you're unharmed. I do. Uh, I do apologize. I'm a bit of a klutz sometimes. I'm definitely going to have to have some sort of Avengers come here to to this room to clear it out of monsters. And booby traps. There's probably quite a few of them in this place. But for now, let's try to find an exit. To think we stumble upon a room that was built for a demon lord. Fascinating. I heard that would I heard from the researchers that it, it, by the ruins from the surface, it's a good possibility. Well, I heard the legends. That a demon lord did rule this, rule uh, rule this land from a long time ago. Let's get back. We need to head back to Lexia. If we, if we could get out of here. After they walked for a couple hours, they eventually found themselves way, find themselves out of the ruin. As Vivian explained to the two of them that it's going to be a couple days travel back. To the capital. Because they just can't go the same way they came. Teacher, have you ever heard of... Of a demon lord heart? I found myself in a chamber that mentioned it. I've never heard of it before. So it, so it intrigued me. Demon lord heart, you say? I don't believe I've heard of it before. You might want to check... You might want to check the Grand Library. And like back at the capital. It's a good it's good to see you interested in the past. Just be careful. It's never simple when you're dealing with something to do with the demon lord. Of course, teacher. I was I'll be very cautious move, moving forward. I think I know you quite well over the oh over these years. I know how you get when there is a mystery. Remember the last, uh, the last ruin we, uh, we visited? Not my fault. I had no idea that magical artifact was keeping the ruin and ruins intact. It's not like we were going to drown or anything. Especially with me having the ability, ability to control water. We were never in any danger. The ruin was in the ocean, Frost. And such artifact that you removed, by the way, was keeping everything dry. The moment you took the artifact, whatever keeping it buried off from the rest of the water, fell. And as you know the outcome of such events, that we almost kind of drowned a little bit. Well, I'm trying to get at, Frost. I'm, I'm just saying, I know how you get when you want to learn something and you're very stubborn. Regardless of your antics, I couldn't ask for a better apprentice. It looks like we've... Well, they found the... Ex I haven't fully exited the building yet, but they're leaving now. As they found their cell, finally got out fully. Then... As they, sorry, as they started to make their way back to the capital of Lexia. When it started to get dark, they headed to the closest village. Once they got... Oh, some are inside? Give me, once they got there, something seemed off. There was no one in sight. Like the entire village was abandoned. Teacher, what's going on here? There's no one. Oh no, something's not right here. Be on guard. I sense pure evil. Vivian heard footsteps coming towards them as she gestured by her hands by for the two of them to hide in one of the abandoned huts. The village itself is a medium-sized village. Very friendly and welcoming to all visitors. It is well known for being a trading town.
town with Lexia and their and their neighbor or neighboring kingdom. Frosted and Vex went into the nearest hut near them as they pos positioned themselves near the windows and door to spy on the upcoming footsteps that's heading to their direction. By the sound of the footsteps, Vivian can tell it's a medium-sized group. Four or five in total. And judging by the clanking noises when they walk, she she could clearly tell that they're wearing armor. Well, at least some sort of armor, armor from the noise of their walks. Or their steps, basically. When the black arm, well, armor soldiers passed the hut, where the three of them were hiding, Vivian overheard a few of them talk when they were passing through the, well, passing, passing the hut. Something about the ritual went completely, that the ritual is almost completed. As they even boast that, saying that the villagers were easy to subdue and captured, then ultimately to their fate. Vivian can tell how they are talking and doesn't, doesn't recognize what kingdom they belong to. But there's one thing she knows, that they're, uh, they're definitely up to no good. When she peeked her head from the door to get a glimpse of what kingdom they belong to, she did find the emblem, but she did not recognize it one bit. And the fact that these armor, um, whoever they are, the fact that they're armor, that they're wearing some pitch black armor with helmets over their uh, head and face. Only thing, only thing she could see is purple glowing eyes in their helmet. They're very concealed. She doesn't know what species they belong to, but the one thing she knows for sure is who, whoever's in this armor, they are nowhere helping. She could feel pure corruption coming from these black armor soldiers. She has sensed evil people before, but she's never sensed anything like this before. Whoever or whatever these armor soldiers are, they're pure evil. Vivian noticed when the soldiers walk on the grass, the grass would die from their contact from their foot alone. And, in, and engaging them in a battle is something she doesn't want to do. There's too many unanswered questions. They have no idea of their capabilities. So it's best for herself and her student and his maid just to stick just stick in the shadows to observe them for now. Vivian's still fully aware if... Vivian is still full aware if there's any living um, civilians. She needs to rescue them, but they don't know where they're being kept. What's the plan, teacher? We stick to the shadows for now and get information. We also need to locate where they're keeping the villagers, if they're still alive. And we need to figure out whatever this ritual is. I know it's no good. We're, s we're still unsure what kingdom they belong to. They clearly belong to a kingdom by the emblem on their armor. Do you still remember that invisible spell I taught you? Alongside with the silent spell to conceal your footsteps, cast them, then follow me. You too, Vex. Frost and Vex did so. As they followed Vivian out of the hut to follow the black plated armor soldiers, keeping their distance but going deeper into the village. When they got to the center of the village, they saw a pile of dead villagers. No one was spared, not even the women or children. Vivian recognized the magical artifact that's right in the middle of the pile of dead bodies. As she, as she's, as she mentioned to her apprentice, 
that that is a void orb and it's not good one bit what exactly is a void orb teacher very powerful magical artifact that was created by the people of the void its ability the main function of the ability is to collect souls once you have all the souls collected it's supposed to do something, but we don't have any any other information on it outside of that. I have a bad feeling about this. We need to stop them now before they could activate it. The Void Realm is, is filled with powerful and deadly monsters. They were sealed off for a reason. When they were about to act, a bright light went off from the, uh, from the Void Orb. As it shoots up in the middle of the air, Frost can see a similar light when he took flight. As he sees similar black lights in the sky all across different areas all around the world. Already expecting every light source, they probably have done something similar. As he begins to descent down... As the black light, sorry, as the, the black beam of light teared through the sky as a rift was formed, as the void realm appeared in the, a rip of the void realm appeared in the sky. All around, the, there are several rifts going off from the lights. The black ooze start to imi Im or imitate, or not imitate, but emerge from the tear as Frost is still maintaining his invisible from his spell as he finally touched down to the ground as he deactivated his dragon wings as he sees the ooze start to move it started to form into a into a shape as the news finally finish or as the ooze started to Finally finished shifting into a tall figure with pitch black skin with razor sharp claws on his hands and feet. Some sort of purple crystal protruding from his chest with one single crystal in the middle of his head. On the tips of each claw has some sort of glowing bright purple to it. As it looks around the area, scanning the entire area, looking for something, the void, what's the word, the void sentry, just hovered above the ground, not even touching the grass or dirt beneath his feet. Frost has a feeling that whatever this thing is, he could clearly see him. He's clearly staring out of his direction every time he would move. To the side, the creature would follow his movements. Crap. Not to be the bearer of bad news, Teach, but I believe whatever that thing is can see us. Before Vivian could answer her student, the Void Sentry went into action and began to shoot out beams from his face, from the crystal glowing a bright purple. They immediately deactivated their spells and began um, dodging. Frost dodged the first attempt from the, the void creature, only to see the creature move so fast that it make after images of itself right behind Frost as it slashed him on the back as the void sentry kicked Frost into several huts with, incre with incredible speed and strength making wind pressure from landing a strike across Void's back she came swinging down with her scythe only for her to get sorry I'm sorry guys only for her scythe to get parried as she got punched in into the chest making her go flying right back right next to her master into her, her own, so, knocking her into several huts. 
As the Void Sentry turned its attention toward Vivian, as Vivian is casting several lightning bolts from from her magic circles, only for the creature to move so fast it makes ap after images of itself. As it charge up some sort of black energy out of his palms, as it shoot it forward toward Vivian, as Vivian was left with no choice but to make magical barriers over herself, protecting her from the Void Sentry energy blast heading towards her, heading towards her direction. Vivian could tell that her barrier is not going to hold up for very long. It's starting to crack under the pressure of the pure magical force. As she sees crack after crack after crack. This is going on. Frost pushed the wall that was on top of him over. As he's coughing up blood from the impact that that, that creature made on him. As he sees Vex not too far away from him, knocked out. Frost knows his teacher is barely holding up a barrier. He has, he tr he tried to get up to his feet, but only for him to fall back down. As it finally dawned on him that they're most likely going to die, something clicked into Frost's brain as his blue slit eyes appeared in his eyes, dragon slits in his eyes. As blue scales begin to form over his body, as flakes start to begin to fall from his blue horns, as his human hands begin to shift, as you could hear bones crack and reform into dragon-like claws, as Frost shot forward towards the void sentry with incredible speed and slammed its fist across the creature's face, Making it, uh, making it go flying into several trees. All the Void Knights surround Frost, all pointing their black weapons at the humanoid Dragon Boy. As they're staring down Frost in his Dragon Battle Mode, this is the first time Frost has activated this ability. All humanoid dragons have access to this ability, but it... But uh, but it usually takes over years of training to unlock it. It it only took Frost to unlock it just by pure anger alone. As Frost in his current state of mind, as that's uh, that's been called Dragon Rage, as Frost is simply going by instinct now. He waved his hand as every single of the Void Knights get frozen solid, then immediately shatter when he snapped his fingers. As Frost's blue wings pop out of his back as he takes flight towards the Void Sentry, as the Dragon Boy and Creature started to collide with each other into the forest, as you could hear loud sounds of clashing coming from pitch black forest from their claws colliding with each other. While Frost is in his battle dragon mode, he has access abilities that he normally wouldn't, wouldn't have access to. He's just not powerful enough and his body hasn't matured enough for him to withstand it. Frost kicked the void sentry into several trees, creating a hue then he created a huge ice spear hovering over him. As he swung his hand downwards, as the spear shot off towards the void sentry, it didn't pierce the skin of the creature, but it made it go flying backwards even further. With the pure physical force that it land when it landed. As when the spear landed onto the chest of the void sentry, it shattered it on on. Uh, on impact. Once the void unit immediately stopped his mo his, uh, his momentum, the void, well, sentry shot out a beam from his head. As Frost was left with no choice but to take flight, dodged the beam of light from hitting him as he begins to fly around. see Frost flying around dodging beams of light that's being aimed at him. 
as Vivian walk over towards the void orb, that's still imminent, that's still keeping the rift open in, in the sky. As she took one of the void soldier's weapons and began trying to pierce the orb to break it, Vivian swung several times, but eventually the orb shattered. The tear to the void slowly closed itself, cutting the void off, oh, cutting the void sentry off from its extra power that he was drawing from, from its realm. So she made her way towards her student to make sure he survives. She wants to, she also wants to check on Vex on the way. She was relieved to notice the, the young demon kid is asleep. She made her way to the direction towards her student. That's currently flying, dodging beams of light. You see Frost hovering in the air as he brought up his hands. Frost immediately begins collecting the moisture in the air of any, any air and, and draw any water, water that's in the area. As he created a humongous water form, well, construct, to a large orb, then made it into several smaller water orbs in the air. Well, as immediately, all of the smaller water orbs start shooting out water bullets continuously at the void sentry that's trying to rush um, Frost. Let's use the remaining water to create humongous water fist as Frost begins punching in, in, in the air as the humongous water fist begins landing hits off of the void sentry creature, whatever it is. The water fist slowly started to freeze into ice fist as the void unit or not the void unit but the void sentry gets repeatedly struck as the void sentry or gets hit over and over again as the ice fist collide with the creature's face frost made the giant two giant ice fists constrict the void unit when uh when uh, frost was okay well sorry when frost knew that the void you or the void sentry wasn't going to move he flew towards the he flew towards the creature head on he land his two feet on top of the chest of the creature as he dug his claws into the large crystal that's coming from his chest as the creature begins to I'm sorry as he begins to yank it out of the creature as the, as the his opponent begins to make some sort of noise signifying that it's in pain. As Frost ripped out the huge crystal out of his chest, then he repeatedly tried to stab the creature with the same crystal over and over again. As he stabbed the creature in the face, breaking the crystal on the creature's wall, Void Sentry's face. As Frost Unleash a powerful frost breath, oh, frost fire, from his mouth, completely freezing the void sentry. One wave of his hand, he smashed the creature into little bits of broken pieces of ice. As frost begins to descend down, as the humongous ice fist begins to lose his form. As it turn, as it sorry, as it turn into snowflakes. Little by little bit. As it finally was official, as the fist does slowly turn into snow, snow. When frost made it to the ground, he's breathing heavy. When he was, sorry, when he finally got a a breather, as he was about to, he was about to pass out. Well, he is passing out, by the way. There's no way around that. He's extremely exhausted. Before he could hit the ground, Vivian caught, uh, caught him in his arms.
and sorry, her arms before he could hit the ground. She carried him. He might be only oh he might only look nine years old, so it was easy for her to pick him up in her arms. Vivian watches Frost's body revert back to his original form. As Vivian carries the unconscious dragon boy through the for through the frozen forest. Thanks to her apprentice, the forest has been most of it has been completely frozen solid. When her apprentice unleashed that frost fire attack, it froze it froze the sentry and anything else that was in the area. She saw the devastation of his attack by all the frozen animals, trees and insects that are frozen in place, like time has stopped. He might have used his fire breath in the air, but it eventually made his way down to the forest. But that didn't really matter to her right now. The forest can be reverted back through time. There's one thing she knows very well. Whatever. Sorry. When it comes to the frost breath, she studied it before. Only person that could unfreeze someone that's been frozen is the wielder itself. Vivian knows that her apprentice might use that ability, but he doesn't truly understand it completely. That's why she's been so focused on him learning his natural abilities that he gets from his species. And look down to her apprentice in her arms. Uh, she has a soft smile on her face. You did well today. Rest, my little dragon apprentice. We need to get we need to get back to the city as soon as possible. Creatures from the void hasn't been seen since my grandmother's time. Judging by the lights the, in the sky. This wasn't the only, the, uh, only village that's been attacked. That's where we're going to stop it. Hope you guys have a good night and day. Judge by time zone. I do apologize. I was like really baked when I made the script. So yeah, I probably won't be doing that again. But anyways, let's I'll catch you guys in the next video.